Coach Jay will open up with a statement. You know, really proud of our guys. Um, as you know, we had a difficult game on Wednesday. And uh, we met as a team and spent about an hour and a half in the locker room really just redefining ourselves and, and, and coming to grips with who we are and what we need to do because we were all disappointed in that effort. I know Tristan was saying he couldn't sleep because he was disappointed in that effort Wednesday night. So I want to commend my team for, for following our lead, uh, really getting a refocus. And we talked about four things. Uh, we needed to play better defense. We needed to become a, a much more physical team and play harder with great intensity and communicate. And, and those guys did that. And, and sometimes, just like some students I have, a, you know, they get a C, and a, a C stands for average, but if that's the best you can do, then you can't be disappointed in them. So I was monumentally uh, uh, proud of our guys, our effort, how we responded from Wednesday. Uh, let's me know, at least I know what I'm doing. Um, and I was really, really proud of the effort that Tristan Carey had. I mean, what a special night. I've been doing this for 25 years and coached, um, you know, NBA lottery picks and first-round draft choices. I've never seen a performance uh, like he put on. And his desire and his ability to carry this team, um, you know, really is heartfelt. I know for me in a lot of ways. So, yeah, I would say it's disappointing, it's, but yet it's, it was exciting. It was disappointing that you have that kind of effort and, and come up a little bit short. And then I, I conclude with giving them credit. I mean, they just hung in there, hung in there. Uh, they, we got up seven or nine, and they came back. And then we took the lead again, and then they came back again, made two key free throws uh, at the end. And uh, you got to give them credit. That's a well-coached team. And that, that Rousey kid, I mean, man, I thought LeBron was getting after him at some point in time, but, you know, he just never lost his edge and, and uh, continued to hit big shot after big shot. Tristan, you can talk about that, dude. Are you torn kind of like that because you did have such a great game? I mean, you probably agree with the trip, but came up one point short. I mean, talk about your feelings. Um, for me, it's no matter how, you, how many points I score, I, I always try to give my best effort both on both ends of the court. You know, like the team needs it more defensively. So if coach asked me, well, yo, we need you this time, then I would go out there and give, I give it my best. Like every time coach says, step it up another notch, step it up another notch. And I just keep giving it. No matter what I score, you know, it could be 33, it could be 7. We still gonna play how we need to play. We still gonna go out there and try to get a, a win. Um, Tristan, usually a, um, a pretty good um, free throw shooter. Um, tonight you were two for six from the charity stride. What was going on there? Um, I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, I guess I wasn't focused mentally like I should have been. I mean, it was very key for those free throws. They're, they're free for a reason. You know, you're supposed to knock them down. And um, I just don't know what was going over me as I was shoot those free throws, you know, I, I took that upon myself, I was thinking about it this whole time, if I only made a couple more free throws, this game would have been, it would have been a different outcome. Yeah, but, you know, a guy scores 33 points, he could have went one for 10, that ain't, that ain't no big deal. I mean, the reality of it is, is, you know, you, you can, uh, you, he had a great night, he had eight rebounds, I mean, he just two assists, two steals, one block, I mean, you know, no one's perfect, and, and those, those were, uh, those were free throws, but at the same time, you know, those shots he was hitting, you know, it, it, let's say you go six for six and don't make five of those threes. I mean, the reality of it is, what a what a fantastic game. I'm not going to let anything cloud that. <clears throat> Coach, going forward, I mean, you got basically half the Big South season. It seems like it's pretty jumbled. I mean, you know, it's probably tough to look at the record, but you do have half a season left. To, you know, it's pretty. It seems like it's pretty even. Well, we're not going to hold our head. You know, I, I told him a couple games ago, had we had we not given that Campbell game away, we'd have been tied for first. Um, so, you know, we're not going to hang our head. And, and I thought what happened, um, what happened in the locker room Thursday with our team and how they responded, uh, if we carry on like I believe we will, I think we'll be just okay. And this is still the second season. And we're showing that we can compete with any team in the league. And just like a transitional year or a new team, you know, we, we show glimpses of who we are. You know, the TCU win, the Liberty win, the Charleston Southern win. And even tonight, you know, we play great, some great basketball. Um, but it's just not who we are totally yet. And, uh, but we got the next eight games to, sh to show this league what we're about. And, and matter of fact, I'm going to talk to my team on Monday about, hey, we're 0-0 again. This is the second half. We know we, we could have had a couple more in the first half. We didn't get them. So now we got to take care of business now down the stretch. Anyway, you talk, you're pretty good atmosphere out there tonight. It has to be, you know, impressive for you, for you guys to have that many fans out there. Uh, and it was pretty loud on a Saturday night. 
Well, that's long yeah. that, that's, that's That's who we are. So, and that's that's what's going to continue to grow. And But when you have great kids, you know, I was telling a, a reporter who's doing a story on Jelani, I said, I, I really believe he's the best student athlete on campus. Character, attitude. I mean, the sacrifices he made, he started last year. And he's been willing to come off the bench, play a new role. That, that hadn't been the best for him. But he's been willing to do that, which is consistent with what these kids have given me. And would I like to have won more games? Absolutely I would. But if there's a team that's given more sacrifice and more effort than this team, uh, then, then show them to me. I'm proud of these guys, particularly the guys to my right and left. Um, Coach, um, Lucas, let me just be on Lucas real quick. Um, he had 12 and 7, but um, he didn't attempt a 3, um, and he shot 70% <coughs> against Liberty. Um, do you think that's an issue that he didn't take any threes? or? Do you, what, you well, Lucas that? is not by <laughs> nature an aggressive basketball player, by nature. Um, but when you make those kind of plays, the other team knows it too, okay? And so they begin to do things. And so if you notice, I call this crowding the box. You know, you know, if you got a good running game and a poor quarterback, they crowd the box in football. Well, every team is crowding the box and really stepping up on them since then. It's made it difficult for them. And I thought tonight he did a solid job. We, we put him in some bad situations uh, coaching-wise that caused a couple of his turnovers. Uh, but but he's, he's just not by nature aggressive to shoot the three. But, you know, I don't think that was a big issue tonight. I thought we, we, we shot 15 threes, which is enough for us. Now, one guy had 13 of them. <laughs> but, uh, but it was good. He's just not aggressive by nature. But uh, I wouldn't trade him for any point guard in the league. Especially in the, in the first half, the, the defense seemed like they were able to, to – to make it tough for Asheville to find any kind of high percentage or open shot uh, over, the, over the past over the past couple of days, how had had your team worked on their defensive game to to improve? Well, we made it a big emphasis, and we just we just basically tried to convince them that you know we when, when you got Tristan Carey and Jelani Dublin and Lucas Woodhouse and Carl Ziegler on your team, you're going to score enough points to win games. But you can score all those points and not win games. Uh, if you don't play defense. And our magic number in the second half has been 30 or 32. Well, we gave up 34. And that was the difference in the game. Uh, but I thought our defense was significantly improved and our defensive focus and physicality was good. And, you know, I screwed us up on Wednesday night. We were going underneath ball screens. We were doing things that were passive. And that's not who I am. And uh, we made some adjustments. The kids responded to it. And I thought they were significantly better defensively tonight. Um, maybe one of you guys can speak on um, what happened in that last minute. Um, I know there was a big steal at the end there. Um, what, what, what went wrong down the stretch? Can't say nothing went wrong. I mean, we were just playing our game. And the coach was just like, come on, like, let us play. We had no time out, so we couldn't run a set play. So we just let Lucas have to do what he does. I mean, you can't say what went wrong. A lot, of, a lot of things could have been wrong. You can't blame it on one person. You can't blame it on the next person. It's all a team effort. You can't just point fingers and, and think it's all going one person. Well, we call it a play we call secondary, which calls for our trailing post guy. In this case, it was Carl to set a ball screen and pop out. And uh, when he set the ball screen, he didn't. He didn't. He wasn't. He wasn't quite open. And so that discombobulated the play. Now, if I'd had a timeout, I would have liked to have used it at that stage. Uh, but I thought we used some timely timeouts to put us in the situation that we were in. And, uh, and then he got a shot off at the end, which was a tough shot. And, uh, you know, even though that's a tough shot to 90% of the population in college basketball, that's really a high percentage shot for him, and it didn't go in. So you got to give them credit. They, they played good defense and, uh, and contested it hard and, and stopped the play that we had set up and, uh, and, uh, and, and won the game. Um, Tristan. Um what, what did it feel like when you hit those, those six threes? Um, were you pretty much unconscious? Um, sorry, seven overall, but six in a row um, in the second half. You felt like you were unconscious and the crowd was getting into it. What was that like? Um, to be honest, you know, it's just one of those zones, you know. I don't really think too much. I, I hardly show emotion on the court because, I mean, I like my, my game, do my talking. So, I mean, I just went out there and put the team on my back and just you know, it was our time to just go out there and fight, and it was that time, that moment for me to just do what I needed to do.